Hey Plant Fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle and if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you. So today I wanted to do a quick video talking about a few rare plants, rare plants that I personally do not believe are worth the hype. So I just did a video in case you missed it. I'll link it for you if you want to check it out of all of the rare plants that I have in my collection that I believe are worth the hype and are worth your money if you wanted to invest in them. So I thought it was appropriate, of course, to do some rare plants that I don't think are worth the hype or your money. And this is my personal opinion. I'm only speaking about plants that I have had in my possession mostly and I'm gonna tell you why I don't think they're worth it so <laughs> the first plant on my list I don't have them with me but I'm gonna show you some footage of what they're looking like if I do still have them because the first one on my list is my philodendron gloriosum <sighs> there is a lot of hype around this plant because it's gorgeous I'm not gonna sit here and bash it and say that it's not a beautiful plant. It is absolutely a beautiful heart-shaped philodendron. It has really gorgeous silvery veining to the leaves and I love it. Obviously it was something that I wanted at one point in time in my collection and ever since I've had it, it has done nothing but be a pain for me and it just continues to look terrible <laughs> and I'm over it. I'm really over it. So I know there's lots of people who have this plant in their care and it looks fine and that's good. I'm happy for you, but I would not ever recommend it to somebody who was asking me like, what should I get? If you were going to ask me, should I get a Dean McDowell or a Gloriosum? You guys know I'm going to tell you to get a Dean McDowell because I just think that it's better <laughs> and it's a way easier for me to care for they're both crawlers so if you don't like a crawling philodendron I didn't know that and then I got the gloriosum and I was like I can't get it to go up a pole because it doesn't grow <laughs> up a pole so that is why I'm putting the philodendron gloriosum at number one on my list of plants that I don't think are worth it the hype or worth the money. I wouldn't want somebody to get this plant and then be disappointed when it goes downhill because they spent a good amount of money on it. So you could be mad at me if you want to, but you guys, if you've been here before, know that the Philodendron Gloriosum is definitely one of my least favorite plants in my collection. I still have it. I'm trying. I am trying, girl. Let me tell you, I'm trying. It just hates me and maybe it's just that specimen but I tend to shy away from like the thinner leaf and the more like velvety leaf plants at this point in time the philodendrons the anthuriums like all of them because they just are a pain in the ass they're they're a huge pain in my butt so <laughs> I just like can't be bothered anymore so that's number one on my list Number two on my list, I'm pretty sure I've talked about before, and it is the Hoya Croniana Silver or the Hoya Lacunosa. I don't know, you guys. I'm pretty sure they're the same plant. Their blooms look identical, so I have a hard time differentiating between a Lacunosa and a Croniana. If they're not the same plant, then they are very, very closely related, but... I, again, love this plant, think it's absolutely beautiful, but I just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like, it just always looks bad, and I got a really nice, healthy one, and for some reason, like, half of the plant just died, even though, like, I'm obviously, I'm taking care of the whole plant. I'm not just taking care of half the plant, and half of it is growing and thriving, and the other half is dying. It's a pain to propagate. I have a really, really low success rate with propagating it, so I don't even want to propagate it. 
and um, in general it's just an annoying plant. So it's beautiful and you guys know I love silvery Hoya. I just wouldn't actually recommend it to somebody if they were asking me what silvery leaf Hoya they should get. There's other ones that I think are better. I am a big fan of my Hoya Lacanosa Luisa Silver, which is like a really similar plant. It has different leaf shape, but it's really similar. So yeah, Hoya Croniana Silver, Super Silver, Eskimo, whatever they call it. I'm not into it. I'm not, I wouldn't buy it again. <laughs> if I didn't have one already, if something happened to the one that I have, I, I wouldn't buy it again. So before we get into the rest of the video, I wanted to talk to you about today's sponsor. Thank you so much to Jobes for sponsoring this video. So this is the Jobes X hair removal device. This really cool device is combining hair removal and skincare all in one. It has this really amazing patented cooling system so that it never really gets super hot to the touch. It has this amazing sapphire screen on it, which makes this basically painless. It literally feels like somebody's just like snapping a rubber band on your skin. Super ergonomic too. It's really easy to hold. All you do is push down this button and you get your lights coming out. You guys know how laser hair removal works. And it comes with these really nifty glasses that make me look like I'm in the matrix. It also turns everything green, just in case you were wondering. It has six different modes when it's on. The screen comes on here. It's a touch screen and it has six different modes for all the different parts of your body. And you've got the different heads here for all the different skincare stuff. I definitely encourage you to go and check out their website and read all about it if you're interested. But I have been loving this so obviously i had to share it with you guys because if you know me you know i'm pretty lazy and i don't love shaving my legs so the thought of not having to do that one day in the future after using this for a while is really exciting so definitely go and check it out i'm going to link it down below for you guys i'll have all the information discount codes whatever you need down there it is also fda cleared clinically proven, all the good stuff. It's like been featured in tons of magazines and um, people really love it. So, and I'm one of those people. So thank you again to Joves for sending me this. This one in particular is the Joves X hair removal device. They do have other ones if you want to check that out. Definitely um, don't think you would be mad about it because let me tell you, Hair removal is expensive, and this is a way more affordable way to be able to do it yourself at home once a week, and that's it. And then hopefully one day I won't have to shave ever again. Wouldn't that be amazing? So thank you again to Joves for sending this to me. Definitely go and check it out. It makes an amazing gift if you don't need one for yourself. And um, let's get back into the video. Number three on my list of plants that I do not think are worth the hype. I'm just going to remind you really quick not to get mad at me, okay? And these are my personal opinions. And the third thing that I have on my list is kind of like a group of plants. And it is all of those like more rare syngonium. So hear me out. Because I know that I said that the tricolor syngonium, like the red spot, whatever it's called, is worth the hype. The prices have come way down on most of these syngoniums, which is a good thing. And which is why I wanted to put it on the list. Because syngonium grow like weeds. And I cannot, for the life of me, fathom a syngonium, an arrowhead syngonium that would cost that much money because they grow like crazy. They're super easy to propagate. There's no reason for that plant to be expensive. So you have like the Panda Galaxy, you've got the Scrambled Eggs, you've got the Three Kings, all of those varieties that are really expensive, they're coming down in price because 
they're syngoniums <laughs> and they're really, really easy to grow and propagate. So the market is just going to be flooded with these plants. Eventually the same thing that happened with the syngonium elbow and the syngonium batik, batik, however you're supposed to say it. I mean, they're in the big box stores now, you guys. So I put this on the list to remind you <laughs> not to spend a lot of money on a plant that is just hype. It's only hype and there's no reason for it to actually be expensive aside from the hype. Does that make sense? Like there's hype around plants that are justified. That's why I made that other list. Those are really easy going, easy growing, less common plants. I put rare in air quotes in case you guys didn't know because when I talk about rarity, if you're new here, I just mean the plant market and availability and pricing, not literal rarity. If a plant is rare, we should be leaving it in its natural environment and, and not bothering it. So house plants and rare are, are a weird thing. So um, when I say rare, I mean usually either expensive or hard to find or both. So I don't understand the concept of any Syngonium, what is it, Potophyllum, the arrowhead variety, being rare when it grows literally like weeds. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. So I put that on the list because I think it's important to remember that certain plants are going to come down in price and to understand how the plant market works so that you don't end up spending hundreds of, hundreds of dollars on a plant and then six months later you're seeing people buy the same thing for a fraction of the price. Like it never feels good to see that and feel like you spent too much money on something. You know what I mean? So that is the reason why those syngoniums are on the list at number three. Number four, y'all are going to hate me for, but I had to put the queen anthurium on the list. The, uh, what is it? Anthurium waraquianum. Queen anthurium. So listen, I love this plant. I think it is absolutely beautiful. The long velvety leaves, absolutely stunning. Like this is one of those plants that never goes out of style that people always want. It's like right up there with the Monstera elbow. It's always going to be a popular plant. It's always going to be one of those plants that even non-plant people see and are like, wow, that's really beautiful. So it's not about it not being beautiful. <laughs> that's for sure. But it is a pain in the butt to keep it happy. Those velvety anthuriums in general are pretty difficult to keep happy. Um, they need higher humidity. The queen anthurium in particular is a heavy feeder, so you have to fertilize it constantly. I thought I killed mine. Apparently, it's like it's still going. I'll show you guys what it looks like over the screen while I'm talking, but it's just been like nothing but problems, that plant, and I cannot seem to get it to be happy. So if somebody were to ask me, I have X amount of dollars. I want to get a more expensive or a rare plant. I don't know which one I should buy. And that was on their list. I would tell them, no, <laughs> like, don't do that unless you have lots of experience already with those types of anthuriums and you know how to keep them happy. But for a regular plant collector, I just wouldn't ever recommend it as like a rare plant that I think is really worth you investing in because it might not do well. <laughs> like I, I genuinely can't tell you some people do really well with it and other people don't. So that is why the queen anthurium is on my list of plants that I don't think are worth the hype only because they are really irritating to keep looking good. So that is not to deter anybody from buying one. If you want one, you do you boo boo. These are just my opinions. But um, if I were to buy another one, I would probably buy a larger, more established one because I started with a, a baby and I think that it's just made it more difficult for me. So that would be my only advice. Make sure you know exactly 
what this plant needs and you're confident that you can keep it alive and keep it happy before you spend your money on it. Okay, so number five. And the last plant or like group of plants, again, on my list is the syndapsis, like the more rare syndapsis varieties, like the, the tricolor and those shingling ones, like the snake scale, um, black mamba, things along those lines. Again, beautiful plants. All of the plants on this list, I think are absolutely gorgeous. And I personally love the way that they look. But the reason why I don't think these plants are worth the hype is because syndapsis are a lot more finicky than people will tell you about. You guys are always commenting on my exotica back here, and that's honestly probably the easiest, the easiest syndapsis you can possibly have is the exotica, and I do think it's because they have like bigger, thicker leaves, so they're not as thirsty as other syndapsis varieties. But I have had pretty much all of these at one point in time, and I just could not get them to be happy and healthy, and they're really pricey still. So I just don't think that they are worth your money if you're going to go out and spend a couple hundred dollars on some rare plants. I don't think that these should be the top of your list. They're absolutely gorgeous. I do think that the prices are going to come down because I have been seeing them more readily available in the States. I think that nurseries are gonna start to have them at some point in time, probably not anytime soon because they do tend to be slow growing, but <sighs> take it from me, I've imported all of these at one point or another and I would not do it again with these plants. If I were able to find them locally for a good price, um, able to buy them in person and can see that they're actively growing and that they're a healthy plant and it's a good price for it, then yeah, sure, I would get it because they're beautiful. The point of this list is that like if you're shopping around like I do on like Aeroid Asia, it's my favorite place to import plants, um, and you're looking at the website and you have X amount of money to spend and you want to get a couple of like more rare wish list plants and you're narrowing it down I would just take all of these off the list completely. <laughs> I mean, the Syngoniums are fine because if you can import them, they're actually more affordable um, and they're really easy to rehab. But the rest of them, I would um, advise against doing that. So if you're able to find these plants for a good price, you're able to find them at a local nursery, go for it. I am talking in terms of you're really trying to make a big plant purchase and considering some of these plants, I would just choose other ones. <laughs> choose some of the ones from my previous list, which you should definitely watch if you haven't when you're done with this one, um, which is now because I'm done. And I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me today. Um, thank you again to Joves for sponsoring this video. You guys should definitely go and check them out. I'll leave everything you need to know in the description box below as well as the comment section pinned to the top where I always leave all the info for you guys. And um, let me know. We can be hair removal sisters together. I've always wanted to do hair removal, but it's so expensive. So I'm just really, really excited. Can you tell how hyped I am? I'm so excited. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. If you did, you should give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. There's a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky parks. If not, there's a super thanks button if you want to super thank me. Everything is appreciated. Cannot do this without you guys. And um, I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. I love you. And I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.